This conference will now be recorded. Good evening, this is Harold Watson, Watson, Chairman of the Planning Commission. Due to the coronavirus 19 pandemic, we are conducting this planning commission at our regular meeting time, but in conjunction with members of both the zoning and ZBA. We are on gotomeetings.com. I call this meeting to order on Tuesday, November 17, 2020 at 7.08. Uh, the planning quorum for this meeting is three, which we've met, and I will now call on our elected members to speak up as present. Christina? Present. William? Present. Myself, present. Dan? Present. And tonight, John is absent. Uh, Debbie Lamberti is filling in for him. Debbie? Deborah? I see her hand. Okay. I would like to quickly ask for a member of the planning to make a motion to accept our meeting minutes from the special meeting of October 26th. Uh, this is Christina. I make motion to accept the minutes. I'll second. Uh, anybody second? Yeah, it sounds I'll second. Okay. All in <clears throat> favor? Aye. 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 Anybody opposed? No. So they're accepted. The only other item on this evening's agenda is our joint planning zoning ZBA meeting to learn about the work of the Stratford Housing Partnership Committee that we have been working on weekly over the last six months. Before I turn this over to the chair of the Housing Partnership um, Committee, let me take roll call of both the zoning and land committees, which I believe we've effectively already done. Aileen, correct? So do I need to call through this list? You do not. Okay, we, we actually have a good complement of both of them. Um, let's see. Um, ch -ch -ch -ch. We also welcome the Stratford Housing Committee and town representatives present tonight. That include, I believe, if I have this right, I believe the mayor, Mayor Hoydick is on with us, correct? Well, she will come in and out. Thank you, Harold. Uh, we also have Jay Habansky, our planning and zoning administrator. We have Susmita, Hi, everybody. We have Susmitha Atoda, our planning, uh, our planning, our town planner. Sorry. We have Aileen Marsh, who is our secretary uh, for both planning and the Stratford Housing Group, and we have Mary Dean, who is the director of economic development. And our special guest tonight is Glenn. Chalder, who is from Planometrics, and I'll let himself introduce. I'll let him introduce himself uh, later on. Um, where am I now? I'd like. I'd like to remind everyone to raise their hand if they'd like to be recognized by the chair or eventually our moderator, and wait to be recognized and called on each and every time throughout the meeting. Please identify yourself by name and title each time you would like to speak. This is per Governor Lamont's executive order, which allows us to conduct virtual meetings. The public is free to listen, but may speak only at the invitation of the chair. Uh, this is the first presentation of this topic. There will be upcoming opportunities to speak at upcoming events. If you want to add your perspective, please email any of tonight's participants. With that said, I call to order this joint session of the Stratford Land Board Commissioners. I will return at 8.30 to ask for a motion to close this meeting. The first item, first item is to introduce the chair of the Stratford Housing Partnership and turn the meeting over to him, Chris Sahadley. Chris? Well, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, very nice to uh, be talking with you again. Nice to be back before the Planning Commission, a uh, former member from 2014 to 2018. So, and Harold and I worked together when, we, when I was on here uh, before. So, well, uh, so pleased uh, speaking also with my other hat as the chairman of the Zoning Commission to uh, welcome our colleagues into this joint session and to welcome also the members from the Stratford Housing Partnership. Just as a means of quick introduction, uh, the Housing Partnership was actually established back in the late 90s and, or early 90s, I believe it was, and it was uh, reinvigorated um, by our mayor uh, through an ordinance passed by the town council to uh, 
for among other reasons to fulfill our uh, state mandated obligation to have a housing plan uh, so we have been meeting unofficially not really unofficially but we've been meeting uh, officially during the week uh, to try to uh, cut through some of these issues with some various stakeholders from the community guided by our uh, town planner and our PMZ administrator and what we wanted to do was take this opportunity to engage the members of the land use boards um, similar to what was done with the airport plan due to not only your uh, your statutory responsibilities as the uh, elected agencies but also your, your knowledge of the uh, town and its needs and its uh, people um, and to help us in our uh, prioritization of some of the housing issues that are affecting our town and need to be documented within our plan moving forward. So um, that is really what this is for today, is to engage you. you. Uh, we have not made any of these are not concrete decisions. We need to have this dialogue, um, especially among the elected members of our town government, uh, in order to move forward and to make sure that this is a cooperative, uh, collaborative process um, when we actually produce a document. And then later on in the year, in 2021, there may be some uh we may get to a point where we can actually begin some legislative processes if that is the result uh, that the boards would have to entertain so that's my introduction and i think what i'll do is um so Mita, do you want to um, moderate the remainder of the session yes go sure um before that i would request aileen to read out um uh, the who the members of partnership are so everybody can you know identify them when they're talking mm -hmm. aileen you have yeah. your list right I do. I oh. mm -hmm. So, in addition to Susmitha Toda, the town planner, uh, there is Christopher Blake, who is not present at this meeting. Beth oh, DePonte. Oh, okay. Sorry. I'm sorry. I'm not, Chris, on, I'm not on. I'm not on. I'm not on video. Mm -hmm. Okay. Chris Blake is here. Beth DePonte, Mayor Lawyer, Laura Hoydick, Desmond. Oh gosh, Desmond Nidzi. I probably butchered that. I'm sorry. <laughs> you're, you're good. <laughs> That's right. Everyone butchers Aileen, so I hear you. Um, Jennifer Shelton, I don't believe, is on. Uh, Crystal Havey, Chairman, you've spoken. Elizabeth Sulik, Harold has spoken. And Glenn Chalder, the consultant. And also, and Mayor is... Hoydick. I did, Mayor Laura Hoydick. Oh, you did? Okay. Mm -hmm. It did. Yep. Mm -hmm. So, Glenn, the floor is all yours. Well, thank you very much. Good evening, everybody. My name is Glenn Chalder. I'm a planning and zoning consultant based in Connecticut, mostly doing work for Connecticut municipalities. And I have the pleasure of working with the Housing Partnership on uh, preparing a housing plan uh, for Stratford. Um, we wanted to get together tonight to bring both well, all the land use boards up to speed on where we're at right now with the work that we've been doing, um, and then have a discussion, if you will, about some of the housing strategies and issues in the community. So I've put together a ubiquitous PowerPoint to kind of provide an overview for our discussion. I believe all the things which are on these slides uh, were sent to you before the meeting. So uh, some of the images may be small on your screen, um, but visually, you should recognize what the page looks like. You'll be able to refer to it if you have any questions. So, uh, next slide, please. Um, in terms of the material, uh, our goal tonight is to provide an overview of our work. Um, that includes the charge of the housing partnership, the current strategies in Stratford, housing strategies in Stratford, which come from the Plan of Conservation and Development, have a discussion amongst the group about possible housing issues or concerns, um, and then transition into discussion of possible future housing strategies and then open discussion um, and try to accomplish all of this before uh, Harold's hard deadline of 8.30. So uh, we'll keep moving. Next slide, please, Sisma. Thank you. Um, Glenn, I don't believe you're sharing your screen just as an FYI. I'm not, but I believe Sismith is. I have it on my screen. Oh. Does everybody else have it on yours? Maybe it's just me. Okay, it's yeah. just me. No worries. Keep going. <laughs> okay. 
So the first thing I wanted to talk about was the charge of the housing partnership. As uh, Chris indicated, the housing partnership was established initially back in 1990. So it's almost 30 years of existence, uh, recently reinvigorated and uh, reconfigured. Um, and uh, the chargers, uh, roles and responsibility of the housing partnership, there are a couple of them. But I think the ones I just wanted to focus on for tonight are part of the charge is to examine and identify housing needs and housing opportunities. Another one is to explore the availability of any land in town, state, local, or other, that might be available for the development of affordable housing. Um, review applicable zoning regulations to determine whether regulations are enhancing or impeding opportunities to possibly create housing. And then the final one on the list is develop and activate a long range plan to satisfy housing needs in Stratford. Um, and it's as part of that effort that, again, we wanted to come and uh, see you tonight. Next slide, please. So when we started thinking about housing strategies in Stratford today, uh, there's no document that says these are housing strategies for the town, um, but actually the 2014 Plan of Conservation and Development summarizes and makes recommendations with regard to housing. And it's actually page five in the POCD, um, which I'm gonna be summarizing on the next couple of slides uh, for uh, review. Go ahead, Susmetha. So what the 2014 house, uh, POCD says in terms of population and housing, the overall goal for population and housing in Stratford to improve the quality of life for Stratford residents through the promotion of health and well being, and to provide a range of housing types for all incomes and lifestyles to attract families and households to settle in the town. Uh, next, please. Following up on that, the POCD identifies some housing objectives to identify appropriate areas for increased density, such as transit oriented development provide rental as well as owner-occupied housing, to reach the state's target that 10% of the town's housing stock be affordable, and to develop living opportunities that promote healthy lifestyles, including walking, the construction of bicycle trails and facilities for other alternatives to automobile travel. Next, please. And some of the policies that are identified in the Plan of Conservation and Development uh, Stratford will encourage development to diversify housing choices in the town. Stratford will improve the provision of affordable housing to meet or exceed the standards set by the state. Stratford will provide an adequate supply of public housing to meet the demand. The preservation of neighborhoods and community character will be a primary consideration when approving the design of residential development. And the town will promote and encourage the adaptive reuse of commercial buildings into mixed use developments where appropriate. Next slide, please. And the plan lays out some specific action steps on these areas. I'm not gonna read uh, these through in detail, but essentially it talks about uh, trying to uh, provide housing choices and opportunities. There was a town uh, document uh, related to um, impediments to fair housing choice. Um, and some recommendations in here about uh, specific steps to take um, to promote housing in the community. Next slide, please. So that provides the background in terms of what the housing partnership has been doing, been preparing research and analysis of census data and having discussion about uh, housing information and possible housing strategies. But since this is the first time we've been with both the planning and the zoning commissions, what we wanted to try to do today as part of an exercise is to go around the room and ask people to identify some of the housing issues or concerns that they see in the community. Some of them are already identified as part of the plan of conservation and development. And 2014 does kind of seem like a long time ago because of COVID and other stuff like that. But I think we're interested in learning about your thoughts and ideas about housing issues or concerns in Stratford um, and get a sense of where the community feels about that. So I don't know if anybody wants to start or we want to go around the room. How would how would you like to proceed? Carol, Mary's do you want, raising her hand. Do you want to call out or do you want me to call out or how, how should we do this? Oh, I'm sorry. I wasn't even I was not looking at wasn't looking at the screen. Um, you can call out, but well, 
the Carol, other thing that Mary's been waving her hand. We're just asking that everybody keep their comments between two and three minutes, but I don't think we have 30 people here tonight, so if yeah. we might be able to extend it a little bit. Mary. Uh, can you hear me, Mary Young, yes, on the record? We can. Uh, wonderful. Thank you to all who made this meeting possible this evening. I, full disclosure, was on the Planning Commission when the 2014 Plan of Conservation Development was created, and it's wonderful to see us go back to it as part of the guide to moving forward in the future. Uh, acknowledging the time constraints, I want to highlight item seven on your PowerPoint which says, I want Stratford to be able to set its own rules for housing developments rather than have developers propose housing where and how they want, paren CGS 8-30G. In a nutshell, that says, I want to be master of my own destiny. I have great faith that with the people that are on this meeting tonight and others who couldn't make it, that we can collectively figure out a way to provide sufficient affordable housing meeting the requirements as defined by the state pursuant to A30G to obtain a moratorium, which uh, our town planner has identified how many units will take to reach a moratorium, giving us a four year reprieve to allow us more opportunities to create zoning regulations to incentivize more affordable housing at a scale and in, in character with the way we see fit. So item number seven is my housing concern, and I hope others will join in and say the same. Thank you so much. Thank you, Mary. Yeah, I'm looking to see, anybody next? Can I just see a show of hands? Um, Harold, I suggest that people can actually, if they're able to just type in the chat box too, if they wanna speak, in case we uh, can't we'll, see everyone. I, mm -hmm. I do, I am, I'm, oh. Mm -hmm. Let me get the chat box over here so I can see it. Okay. Uh, next is William. You're all, you're muted, William. Oh, oh, sorry. I was ready to type. Hi. Good evening, everyone, and thank you for your time. I'll keep it short. Uh, I second what uh, Mary Young had just said, and I'm focusing on number five, whereas I think we are. Um, I think there are single parent families and lower income and people and families who need lower costs housing options and choices. And I think sometimes number five gets misconstrued as low income housing, and it takes on a negative connotation for just regular people who need housing. If you make $60,000 in Connecticut, you still can't afford normal rent. $60,000 is a good sum of money. So I think one of my questions uh, to the board, uh, planning commission and Glenn alike, is do we have budgets, and maybe this is for the mayor, to, to acquire land in Stratford to possibly fund, to Mary's point, our own projects as opposed to having developers come in that we could our own land and maybe be part of the plan? And are we support the changes in our current zoning in terms of how subdivisions can take place on existing lands to increase housing, maybe for in-law setup, senior housing right on your own land? Have we uh, crossed those bridges yet? I, I don't want to speak for the that's mayor. I think the point that's been made so far in our discussions, um, William, has been that um, we should make recommendations with regard to budgets and things like that, that that may be necessary to accomplish our goals and objectives. With any plan, implementation is sort of a key element. Um, and the issue about regulation changes is something, again, which could allow us to uh, accomplish some of our goals. We've looked at the uh, subdivision regulations and the zoning regulations, identified some possible regulation changes, and that's actually what we want to talk with you about as part of uh, the next exercise at tonight's meeting and talk about some of those ideas. So, William, it's Laura. Thank you so much for um, being here tonight and being a participant in uh, not just the Thank planning you. commission, but for all, all of our land use. Um, projects and policies and plans. So in order for the town council to approve any monetary venture, they're going to need a, a plan or a proposal. And that's why we are working together, not just as a housing partnership, but also as all of our land use commissions. So we can have a unified plan 
um, to present for their approval. And ultimately, it'll, we'll go through all of your bodies, hopefully, to review and approve, and then go to the town council. So if we're all in consensus, um, and the town council view, views that acquiring land is important, make the plan work, then they have the wherewithal to be able to purchase property on behalf of the town. Okay. Uh, next. Do we? Thank you. Okay. Oh, sorry. Uh, have we, we done we, thus far? I guess was my question. Have we? Do we have any or stock of land or some segregated that future tents that Lordship Boulevard? I keep going back to that. Have we done that yet? Harold is uh, Harold. If I may, go ahead. Do you mind? Thank you, uh, William. As part of the housing partnership plan, it is to identify parcels or areas of interest to the town. But again, this is very premature, and we have to put the plan in place first. We have to come to consensus um, before we're going to identify plots of land or areas that we want to have housing. Thank you. Christina, I think you were next. Thank you. Um, I just want to quickly reiterate um, and to support uh, William's um, calling out of number five. Um, and, you know, just to say, I think there's probably hardly anybody on this call right now who doesn't know of somebody who has hit hard financial times. And I think if this pandemic has done anything, it's illustrated how easy it is to fall down the socioeconomic ladder. All it takes is one terrible recession and you're out of a job, your savings are used up, um, and all of a sudden you can't afford to stay in your house and making sure that we have options for um, lower income or maybe people who have, have, long -term, have lost their uh, employment longer term uh, can find a home in Stratford. Um, I also want to, um, I guess point out number eight, um, which seems to be a recurring concern from residents, especially um, in the district that I represent in the TOD, um, regarding the scale and character um, of, of uh, developments that have been presented. Um, and I just want to, um, I guess, just sort of reiterate what I think has been said about a million times, which is, that given that there is prime development opportunity in the TOD, which also happens to encompass our historic district, that really needs to be taken into consideration when we're looking at those opportunities. Um, and, and, I, and maybe under consideration or in consideration is, is an understatement, um, that, that is of critical importance um, to, to maintain our town's character, our town's history. Um, I'm also wearing my hat tonight as a board member of the Stratford Historical Society. Um, so I, I really hope that we have a good, robust conversation about that. Anybody, is there anybody who is not on screen who would like to say something? Harold, I saw in the chat window that Mary Young wants to go second time. Yes, I know. I'm, just, I'm, trying to cover, okay. I'm trying to cover as many mm -hmm. people as I can. If okay. there's no way, I will. So, uh, yes, Daniel. So uh, I'm looking at number six here. And it says, I want Stratford to have a housing stock that will attract businesses that will stra strengthen our tax base. I'm looking at it in the opposite direction. You know, in order for us to attract more people into housing here in Stratford. And I, if you look at the majority of the homeowners in town, we are actually going outside of our belt borders, to support local businesses. You look at Shelton, you look at Trumbull that have thriving businesses just outside of our borders, Milford also. So I think, you know, this isn't a knock on economic development because I think they're doing their absolute best to try to attract businesses, but I think when you look at thriving communities, uh, the businesses that they have within their communities are doing well, and that attracts uh, the locals to stay within town and brings people in from other communities and want to stay in a particular community because of those local businesses. 
especially when you're looking at people that don't have an opportunity, when you're looking at seniors that can't drive, uh, you know, with some of other economic issues that might be uh, that might be arising through uh, through different uh, populations. So I think that's something that we really need to take a look at also. Thank you. Anybody? I could be a teacher and call on you. <laughs> I think uh, Mary Young also uh, had another comment she wanted I know, to add. I know she was, right. So Carol, no one, go ahead, Mary. Thank you, Mary Young, for the record. I wanted to add number nine, the other category. I think there's a desperate need in not just Stratford, but throughout the state of Connecticut to educate those members of the public who are not land use persons like ourselves. There seems to be uh, an unfortunate uh, perception of what does it mean to be of affordable housing income requirements. And in my job, I do planning in my day job, I remind people as a civil servant, I am an example of the face of affordable housing. And when I shame people by saying, what, you don't want to live next door to me? <laughs> you know, uh, my point being, I think uh, the more we can educate our constituents whose support we will need to move forward, the more likely success we will have. And I have great faith in our town planner and planning administrator that they know of what I speak and with Glenn Childers assistance can help us move that baton. Thank you for letting me speak twice. If no one else is want, wants to speak, I will do my, my quick turn. I had originally marked one, five and eight, uh, but they've all been covered. So I'm going to pick the hard one, which is seven. Um, I want Stratford to be able to set its own rules for housing developments. Part of what the work we've done in the last six months on this committee has been to go through all of all the issues that we could possibly think of for all the different populations and all the pressures that are on Stratford housing stock. Um, I just think that setting our own rules for housing development is ultimately what's going to change the situation. We're not going to be able to get funding. We're not going to be able to get the kind of developments we want, any of those kind of things, until we first get the vision of how we want it to happen, what we want to happen. And that includes the populations of who we're talking about, whether they're seniors, whether they're young couples, whether they're uh, empty nesters. Those are all things that are critical that we address in some kind of way in the work that we're going to be doing in the next year with our zoning regulations. And eventually that should have an impact on the 830G um, requirements. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? So if you would like to, you know, request everyone by name, I mean, I don't know, because I think it's a, it's an important opportunity for everyone to chip in and no answer is right or wrong. It's just, you know, the more opinions we get, the more diverse the plan would be, the more well, uh, uh, targeted I, the implementation would let be. Me, let me just go through it. I, I'm going to call a name and if anybody doesn't want to say no, thank you. Uh, I'm going to start from the bottom of the list. Ron, Tishy, are you there? Yes, thank you, Howard. Ron Tickey. Um, yeah, when, when I look at our uh, undeveloped property, uh, myself being in the uh, the business real estate aspect of it, I'm always thinking uh, of businesses, what, what Stratford could do to attract businesses. Um, I always take that into huge consideration of uh, you know, the Ferry Boulevard section, District 1. But I'm also very mindful of the history of Strapper. Uh, we need to find that balance to try to get today's world to blend in with, with our, our history. Um, so six is something that really catches me. What was that last part? Number six. Oh, six. Oh. 
I'm going to go. Mm -hmm. Ron, are you finished? Jim, Jim Bigliotti. Uh, hi, Jim Bigliotti. Um, I, uh, when I went through the list of issues and concerns, I uh, identified number seven and eight as well. That's already been mentioned. Um, and I'd also like to follow up and say, I think um, uh, educating the community about what the plan is. Uh, you know, there's been a lot of development in the first district here, uh, in the transit oriented district. And there's always been a lot, there, there's, there continues to be a lot of concern about the size of the development um, and the scale of the development. And, you know, in conversations that I've been able to have uh, with Town Hall, you know, I, I have a pretty fair understanding of what the vision is, but it's, um, it's hard to get that community. I, I guess people don't really understand it. They see uh, the outcomes uh, and they see, you know, large scale buildings uh, in places where they didn't see them before. And, and there's questions about that. So I think, um, I think that that's an important component. You know, if we're gonna get buy-in and support from uh, our community, that education needs to be a stronger, uh, a stronger part of this, you know, uh, publicity, uh, transparency, uh, however you want to phrase it, to, to, to make sure everybody has an understanding that we actually, there is a vision for, for, for the use of, uh, in the town. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, next is uh, Elizabeth Sulik. Hi, good evening, everyone. Housing is very close to my heart based on the work that I do. And but I realized how important it is to have a good balance of housing, transit, and access to education, senior services, and a good mix to support all the groups that we do want to attract to Stratford. So I think this committee is very important, and I commend everyone on it for having the heart and the desire to be on it and to move Stratford into the next phase um, to accomplish all our goals. So thank you for letting me speak. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, the next person is Desmond. Oh, hi, Desmond here. So um, personally, I, you know, gravitate towards number two and number six, um, primarily because I think, you know, this group here has very critical uh, mission in kind of honoring some of the, the character of the folks that helped establish um, kind of the trends that have brought us here and also kind of look ahead on the demographic that is going to occupy Stratford that we'll be designing here. So, um, which I'm part of that um, demographic. And so making sure that that group has housing choices that are suitable for them is important. Um, that kind of 30 to 45 range of folks that may be saddled by burdens, uh, educational burdens and all of that kind of stuff, making sure we have suitable housing choices for them is very important. Uh, so I think we have a good opportunity there. And then also with businesses, um, again, linking to that, to that demographic, um, being open to mixed use kind of uh, housing options where you can uh, access a lot of different things in the uh, close geographic area. Um, so having the right kind of businesses to be able to offer the living accommodations to that group and also other groups is also important. So those two really jumped out at me and um, I think we'll be able to do that. Thank you. Deborah Lamberti. Something happened every, all the videos left. Deborah? William, I can see everybody. Oh. Deborah, you're on Deborah, mute. Deborah, you, you might need to unmute yourself, Deborah. I think she's trying. I don't think it's working. Can okay, somebody... gonna, Deborah, we'll hear you when you unmute. I'm going to go on to the next person. 
I'll come back to you. Uh, David Decilio. Uh, hello, everyone. Um, boy, it's a, I'm, I'm not often speechless, but I'm trying to, I guess I, I Harold, I agree with you and um, let's identify what we want Stratford to look like in the future and then design and plan to that goal, taking into consideration all of the different needs, but maybe weighting them in such a way to uh, create a community that we desire. So to give you an example, you wouldn't want, you know, 70% of your housing stock addressing all of, you know, affordable um, people in great need. Uh, I, at the same time, you know, I don't see us, you know, trying to become a, a, a Westport or a Greenwich or something like that. Uh, every community has their own identity. So um, something this week interesting happened. Um, my mother-in-law, who's in her 80s, lives in Georgia. And she sold her single family ranch. And surprise to me, she rented a brand new apartment in a senior apartment building that is income based. So because she has limited income, I think her cost of living is seven or eight hundred dollars a month. I mean, we don't have options like that here. So in listening to everyone, my I thought I said, why don't I call Cobb County, Georgia and find out how they did that? Um, and then you know, see if that's something applicable up, up here in Connecticut. Um, there may not be funds available, who knows? But um, I guess that's all I have for my two or three minutes. Thank you. And make the phone call. Uh, let's see, Christopher Blake. Yes. I'm going to I'm going to go back to uh, Deborah Lamberti. Are you able are we able to hear you now? Are one of the co-facilitators or co-hosts of the call can they unmute Deborah no. on their end? We cannot. She has herself muted. Uh, oh. And Christopher is offline. I tried okay. to, so I couldn't. Mm -hmm. oh, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to be sure to everybody, and I will just. There she goes. Hello. Am I here? Yep, we hear you. Are. Um, yeah, I I have a lot of issues with um, affordable housing. Um, I want to have affordable housing, but it, it has to be within certain parameters. Harold, if I may um, ask her what she means by parameters so we are more clear, like is it design sure, uh, go ahead. density Deborah, can you, or can you, Deborah? Can you explain a little more? Mm -hmm. Because it's, um, I want in affordable housing, but I can't like, um, there are a lot of affordable housing options here now. Okay. Let's see. Uh, I have caller one who I have no idea who that is. And after that, I have, is there anybody on caller one? Okay, I'm going to go to the, I'm going to go, I'll come back to you if you're there. Uh, Harold, Harold, uh, this is Jay Habansky. I had caller one muted because we were getting tremendous feedback. Okay. I have just unmuted them. So now they have an opportunity to respond to you. So caller one, we, we don't know who you are, but if you could give your name and also give your comment. Hello. Go on, Harold. Yeah, I think your uh, bills are here. 
that your pills are here. Your pills are here. Okay, I think we can come back to that one. <laughs> okay, uh, I'm going to go to Beth DePonte. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Thank you for giving your time this evening. Uh, when I look at this list and hearing what everybody else has said, I think the idea of planning for the future of what Stratford wants is absolutely appropriate. And it got me thinking that what we don't have on our list is uh, is planning or having opportunities uh, for artists in Stratford and in building communities of artists who often need uh, lower income housing. So I, I think all of you, all of these issues are very important. I think um, there are strategies that we need to consider that we don't do now, like having a low income uh, housing trust fund uh, that that would supplement um, uh, people's uh, rent, perhaps, um, in addition to the building of affordable housing. But uh, you know, I think that's something that we'll be getting to later in this meeting. So thank you very much. Okay, is there anybody who I missed? Um, did you talk to Annette Streets? Oh, no, I did not. An Annette, are you there? Can you hear me? I hear you now really well. Okay, okay. Well, good evening, everyone. Um, I, uh, first of all, want to thank everyone for their, their comments. Um, and I agree with just about all of them. Uh, when I uh, looked at it, I selected item five, six, and seven as being the most important items for me. Uh, and uh, I agree with all of the previous comments that people have made about them. I would just like to add a little something about businesses. I, I think it would be uh, important to expand the notion of business to include services as well. Uh, um, businesses and services that uh, will serve the needs of uh, families at all stages of life, whether they be uh, families with uh, young children or uh, middle school or high school children, uh, adults, seniors, oldsters, <laughs> I said seniors, uh, empty nesters, uh, the availability of those uh, services, for example, um, or what attracted me to the town of Stratford uh, when I wanted to find some place to settle into after uh, retirement. And I know other families and other people at different stages of life who, for example, are interested in Stratford, they look at the businesses, they look at the services, they look at the educational system, for example, if they still have school age children, they look to see whether or not the transportation is adequate, whether or not they can get to the store, um, and uh, whether or not the kinds of businesses and services are available for them. So I think that when we talk about planning uh, housing for the future, we should also think about uh, the different needs of all of the demographic uh, that we want to attract to our town. I'm going to ask the question, is there anybody else who would like to add anything, or did I miss anybody? Yes, Harold. I'm sorry, yes, Harold, I'm William Boyd would like to comment when you get a chance. Anybody else? Just let me just do a survey here. Harold, Barbara. Heimlich. Barbara is not on our committee, but I- I'm not on the committee. I'm just here to listen. But if you want to make a quick comment, you can. No, so far okay. everything I've heard is, is good. Okay, then let me go to William. Hi, yes, uh, William Planning Commission District 2. Uh, to someone's question, I believe he said his mom in Georgia moved. I wanted to set up a meeting with New Neighborhood House. Uh, they're in Stanford. They have something called shared housing. They have apartment buildings as well as uh, uh, subsidized condos. My mom lives in one. So how they do it is the price of that condo. There's a formula that they use that changes with the uh, median income. So for instance, you bought a condo at $69,000 30 years ago. The most that condo can sell for right now is $100,000. And they do it based on the median income 
of that particular town, Stratford's is like $80,000. They wanted to meet with the planning, zoning, or whoever to see if they can uh, mimic or duplicate a project like that in Stratford. They're looking for other areas to expand and manage, but those projects have been there for over 30, 35 years. They have about five of them. So I was trying to do that too, but with this COVID thing, it's been hard to kind of get them to do a presentation, but they're interested in doing one. It's called New Neighborhood House in Stanford. And is there anybody else? Oh, I'm gonna just um, make one, yeah, yeah uh, let me just make one comment, then I'm gonna pass it to Susmita. Mm -hmm. One of the things that we did in all of our work over the months is to identify what audiences in Stratford needs help? Where do we need to think about? So the first three or four that you see on this list really was us working hard to identify who needs housing help in this town. That's all I wanted to add. Yes, Susmita. So uh, Mary Young has uh, texted to me privately on the chat window asking me and Jay to express our opinions as well because as planning and zoning staff, that, I, that's um, lovely. I just I thought you have you guys would speak up whenever you wanted to. Let's go to Susmita and then we'll end with Jay and then I'll pass it back to um, Glenn. Sure. Um, so I think um, everything in this list is equally important. And when I first started work here in Stratford, um, I wanted to get a feel of the place and I was looking at the demographics the regulations and everything. And I felt like um, Stratford has this unmet potential um, for especially, you know, those people who have um, incomes well below uh, the area median income. But even though the housing um, prices are reasonable and affordable, they're still unable to make their ends meet because their incomes are so low. And when I looked at the data on renters, I found that renters was, uh, were severely cost burdened, uh, which is because I feel like there's a rental demand, but there's not enough supply uh, in Stratford. Um, and I also felt like, you know, um, this is a very affordable community in general compared to the rest of the towns in um, uh, Fairfield County. But when you look at the affordable housing stock uh, percentage, it only shows it as 6.3%, uh, and 10% is the threshold for any community to be exempt from state statutes, um, where you know the community gets more control on where these affordable housing developments could be placed. So Stratford deserves that 10%. To be very honest, um, it is very uh, you know it is right there. It offers choices for many people, and it's about how can we make that work, make make that those numbers work and get to that 10 person threshold so that there are no predatory developments that are, you know, um, threatening the character of existing neighborhoods. Uh, how can we design those affordable housing developments right so that uh, people feel comfortable um, having an affordable housing development in their neighborhood? Those are the things that I'm thinking as a town planner. I also think uh, moving forward, integrated living will be um, something that all communities uh, will have to catch up with because people are just tired of driving their kids everywhere. They want communities where their kids can, you know, go out and play without having to uh, supervise them a lot in a, in a small close knit community setting. That's one, that's one thing that I prefer as a parent for my children. And I think most parents that I know feel that way too. So that's something I would say should fall under the other category. And I'll give it to Jay now. Great, thanks Susmita. Uh, Jay Habansky here. Um, so I just have two quick points. One is kind of um, aligned with um, housing concern number seven. Um, you know, one of my concerns, and I've been here since 2016, is that Stratford is missing an opportunity to take more control of its own destiny um, and to become more of an, a more attractive place to live for people of all ages. Um, I think once we are able to, um, like uh, as we've discussed at our many meetings, control our own destiny and really um, you know, implement some of these policy changes that allow for uh, housing 
to come in the many forms um, that we're kind of envisioning. Uh, I, I think it's really going to benefit Stratford in many ways culturally. Uh, you're going to get uh, there will be economic development spinoffs, um, more restaurants, uh, more music. I think all those things that we love about our uh, that we love about Stratford uh, would only be magnified. Um, uh, another concern I have, and I know someone mentioned it earlier this evening uh, about education. Uh, it might have been uh, Commissioner Vigliotti. Uh, you know, one of the concerns I have about affordable or attainable or just housing in general is that it, it has a branding issue. Um, and, you know, not all housing diversity comes in the form of a 100 unit apartment building um, right next door to you. Um, they are, and we've talked about this extensively at our the housing partnership meetings, is that it comes in the form of a two-family. It comes in the form of a, uh, the, and I'm using air quotations if you can't see me, the granny pod that is potentially in the backyard of a garage that you never know is there. Um, I, I just think that uh, we're missing an opportunity um, by um, not articulating what affordable, attainable, or just housing in general really can be for Stratford. Um, so that's it. I won't take up any more any more time. Thanks, everyone. And I'm going to hand it back off to Chris. Yeah, I want to thank everyone for their for their input. Um, just um, you know, a lot of you have gravitated to some of the ones that we that uh, have been foremost on my mind. Um, you know, number seven and eight, and I think that comes greatly from. Uh, my experience in zoning is that we do end up um, as a town spending a lot of resources on the affordable housing issue and the direct and indirect consequences of uh, falling beyond the threshold of 8-30G. Uh, and, um, you know, even beyond that, actually, it was sort of an interesting thing. I was looking up something just yesterday, and I stumbled across an article that was written in the in the 70s and it was an interview with the Board of Zoning Appeals chairman back then here in Stratford and he was talking a little bit about how you know so much of what goes on in town is somebody wants to do something and you come forward and you bring your regulation and say okay this is what I want to do and this is the regulation that I'm going to back into it for me. Um, so I guess we've had this problem probably for a couple decades longer than I've been around and it was like a 1977 article. If I find it I'll send it over to you guys. Um, uh, but we do have to be in charge of that. We have to be mindful of that. Um, we are very much a, a home rule state, um, and the zoning, the way the zoning has been handled, it's sort of drifting in, in that other direction. But we want to make sure that, um, you know, we are a welcoming community. Uh, we are an accessible community. Um, and in our, I think it's as Mita said very clearly, you know, as we stand with Fairfield County, um, we have some inherent benefits of that, and I think we also need to be conscious of the fact that, um, you know, let's hope that a few months from now this pandemic will be past us, uh, but there may be long-term consequences to our way of living that may be permanent. Um, perhaps people will not be going to the office all the time. Perhaps uh, the home office will become a, a thing that people, you know, is now a permanent fixture in people's lives. Uh, we've actually had to, um, uh, one of our regulations re re was regarding number of bedrooms and didn't really actually consider that um, home offices would be considered a bedroom. There was some sort of a calculation in there that might need to be something, you know, that can be looked at. But, you know, it, the more that we can identify things that attract people to our town, um, you know, the, the stronger of a community that we're going to be, but we also have to be in the, in the balance side. You know, what are the parameters for these things? What is going to change the character of this community? And I feel sometimes, as Jay just pointed out, when we're talking about 100 unit developments in there, um, you know, we are somewhat constrained by the way our town is laid out uh, geographically. Uh, we are almost 90, we are 90 some percent developed. Uh, we have traffic constraints because you have a highway and a railroad that goes through town. Uh, there's only um, two, there's only three bridges that go across into our neighboring town of Milford. So, you know, all
all of these things come into the way we plan. Um, but as we go through this process, um, I think uh, most of the members here are seeing the things that, um, you know, are going to be part, are things that we actually can do something about and take some proactive strategy around. And so I, I think we're off to a, to a good start. Um, so we thank you for your, for your feedback. Uh, Glenn, do you want to add anything to this? I think I'm ready to go to exercise number two, so we can spend a little time on that if, if you guys are. So, Smith, if you go to the next slide. You're ready, Thank you, Glenn. We're, we're down to a half an hour. Yep. We can stay later if everybody agrees to it, but that's what we have left. Thank you, Harold. Um, thank you, everybody, for your input on the first exercise. That was very helpful for us, and I think it's going to help the committee overall. Exercise number two is now for an opportunity, to maybe not necessarily to go around the room, but there are some different strategies that we've been talking about. We did look back to the last two plans of conservation and development and the strategies that are in there, and many of these strategies are in those plans. And, and here we are 15 or 20 years later that uh, we haven't accomplished as much in some of these areas as perhaps we might like. So some of the strategies that we've been talking about uh, in the committee were on a page that uh, identified possible future strategies. Quickly, there are things like supporting the housing authority in terms of the work that they do for, I think as the point was brought up, income-based housing. Uh, concepts of inclusionary zoning, creating additional housing options, uh, maintaining and improving the design guidelines and process, because I think people talked about how important design was, supporting and facilitating aging in place, looking for funding opportunities to uh, try to en enhance uh, housing opportunities in the community, better managing and preserving current and future affordable units, uh, number eight is seeking to avoid the overrides of local zoning, which we've talked about as well, and continuing to collaborate and educate. So I think we've picked up on some of these, but which ones of these strategies do you guys feel um, could be really productive ones for us to focus on over the next five to 10 years? Who'd like to start with that? I will make a comment. if no one else will, Go ahead, uh, explore funding opportunities where we actually would look into a housing fund bank, which would really require a certain level of administrative work, but that anything built in our town would essentially um, earn the town a money to put into a savings account that we could then invest in some of these projects uh, and couple it with grants and everything else, but it's one of the missing elements we've had in our town. You can't ask for a grant if you're not willing to put up something, and we haven't had the monies to do it. Um, so I, I think that's really something that's really critical that we're going to have to really spend some time on. Thank you, Errol. Anybody else? William Boyd Not here. Oh, sorry. I saw Mary first. So Mary and then okay. William. Mm -hmm. Mary Young, for the record, thank you. I want to highlight item two, consider implementing inclusionary zoning. Uh, I think it's very easy for the Zoning Commission to adopt regulations requiring in every multifamily development there shall be whatever is acceptable set aside of affordable housing. In Westport, where I work for 10 years, we've had that on the books. 20% is the requirement we requ we ask for for all of our developers. We don't want to go to 30% because we don't want to make it an A30G proposal. So we go as high as 20%. Other towns in Fairfield County have adopted a lower number. But in this day and age, I think everyone's got to do their part. And the more affordable <coughs> units we can create in our inventory, the so we get to the moratorium. So again, item number two would be my uh, priority on this list. And I thank you once again for recognizing me. William, you were next. Yes, to your point, Harold, I think uh, two and three on this <laughs> list are important. But I go, go back to grants and different things. The state of Connecticut is, has been moving for the last few years of keeping seniors in their homes. So if we partnered with the state to build senior housing, 
to then keep those seniors in their homes, thus releasing the burden of the state to take care of them and go out to those homes to see them. I believe there's a partnership there that can work if we as the group, you know, designate certain areas for that type of project that would alleviate, even if you had 100 units, that would be massive in a town of Stratford where there are you know, population of 50,000 people. Even starting with 100 units for seniors uh, with a partnership for the state would be good. So something like that, I think we can pitch to Phil and, and uh, uh, Mr. Grasco to start seeing if there are funds for those sorts of things. So we know if there's an X amount of dollars from the state, we can then pull in other monies, maybe not through the town budget, but through other things, grants and such, to maybe fund something like that as a starter. Anybody else? Don't make me come after you. Hey, Harold? Yes. Yes, Actually, Jim. I, I threw you to, uh, to Mary. Can you talk a little bit more about how that, I'm curious, uh, you always talk about this offline, how that minimum number of units has worked in Westport because one item of frustration I think we've had on, on, on my side uh, is that when we've gotten projects forward, there's an absolute bare minimum that it seems that are proposed under affordable and it's really used, I hate to cast aspersions on their motives, but it's used as a gateway to get a lot more um, uh, screen market list. rate units uh, approved by just having like, you know, two to three, and it actually sets our percentage back. How, how does that work in your town? Mm -hmm. uh, Mary Young, for the record, I think it would be beneficial, and I'll share with your town planner, you know, what the Westport model has yielded so that she can share that with the benefit of others. But the point being, if everyone's required to do it, then the developers are not scared off from being attracted to doing development. They're all on the same playing field. So uh, I look forward to sharing that information and thank you for the question. Thank you. Uh, uh, Susmita. Yes, I know Jim wanted to talk, uh, Jim Vigliotti, so I'll make it brief. Um, in response to Chris Salevi's question on um, minimum requirement for affordable units and what Mary Young has stated uh, as Westport's model. Um, we have to be very careful uh, because Stratford development market or climate may be different from Westport's development climate. Um, in Westport, uh, maybe there is more demand um, and maybe, you know, there is a way that developers are still willing to pay, go to that 20% threshold to invest. So, Again, I would like to see what the model is from Westport side, but I would also like to know more about the development climate in Stratford and how it applies to Stratford. Jim. Um, thank you, Jim Bigliotti, District 1 zoning. Um, I, I was I was just this was a thought I had as I was reading through the uh, information that was shared and talking about the number of um single family homes that are occupied by one person um and that the fact that a lot of the people the residents in town are are the median age is creeping up forward and uh for future strategies number three additional housing options and i don't know if this comes under residence apartments but i was um i i keep thinking about the fact that if we have a, a younger population or if we're infusing younger people into the community that's going to be to the benefit of all of us and and somehow uh, uh, allowing people who are in their homes but they're getting on in years to have an opportunity to you know rent an apartment or rent a room to to a college age individual or somebody who's yeah you know, some kind of partnership in that regard where you're creating housing opportunities that are going to attract younger people but maybe it's gonna be beneficial to the homeowner and then it's gonna be beneficial to the person who's looking for uh, a place to stay. And I don't know if that needs to come under some sort of town sponsored idea or some town sponsored effort, or, or at least create the opportunity for those things to happen town wide. Thanks. Thank you. Anybody Christina else? Christina Cazares wanted to ask a question, Harold. Christina? I don't see you on my nope, screen. I'm right here. Sorry, my my uh, camera's off. But okay. um, 
Thanks. I actually just had a couple of questions. Um, to what um, to what extent? I guess this is just one question. To what extent historically has Stratford um, used things like ex um, like expediting affordable housing permits or reducing parking requirements or other ways to sort of help um, reduce the cost for developers of producing affordable housing? Uh, this is Jay Habansky. I can answer just from my... Um, you know, five years here in Stratford, and uh, mm -hmm. there there hasn't appeared to be any of those um, um, policy offerings for affordable affordable housing development. Uh, okay. As what happened before my time, I'm not. I don't know, um, but it, it, I don't think that it has been. Uh, there have been those offerings in the past, but I, I could be wrong. Okay, I mean, I mean, I hope that we. If we're thinking about you know future strategies, that that might be um, those might be two ways that we can look at that. The other um, question I guess I had was um, regarding the use of things like impact fees. Um, I know that in California um, and some places in the Pacific Northwest, um, they've used um, impact fees as it, as sort of a a way to pay for or a way to sort of like <laughs> you impose those fees on any sort of new development for the purpose of like paying for the services required by that development. Um, and, you know, they can do it on, you know, either a per unit or like a per square foot, um, you know, rate. Um, and I don't know, I, I don't think we've maybe quite done the kind of nexus study that needs to be done in order to see if that's a viable option, but, um, you know, to see where that point between um, low, you know, low, low wage business, you know, low wage job creation through business development and the affordable housing, um, you know, the affordable housing stock that needs to accommodate that new workforce. Um, you know, I, I hope that that those are a couple options that we can look at moving forward. Um, I would else? like to just add something to this conversation, Christina, regarding. Yeah. Um, uh, streamlining permitting mm -hmm. processes. Mm -hmm. That's something um, I was part of the TOD task force um, for Governor's um, Council on Affordable Housing or Transit Oriented Development too. That's mm -hmm. something that they've been discussing at the state level also to streamline uh, affordable housing departments permitting processes. Uh, mm -hmm. More than local, I think it works much better when it is done at the state level because um, the funding for affordable housing developments is through CHAFA, uh, Connecticut Housing yeah. Finance Authority, and um, you know there's a lot of agencies involved in mm -hmm. um, you know promoting these kind of developments at the state level. So mm -hmm. I agree with you that it should happen more at that mm -hmm. level because it takes minimum nine months or more for you to get mm -hmm. that kind of financing for an affordable housing development okay. before yeah. you come to local boards. And then within the local boards too, the developer is tossed around for another four or five months. Um, right. And that's right. a significant time. Regarding okay. the impact fees, um, again, impact fees are all also largely dependent on the development climate and the community's mm -hmm. um, acceptability of the concept. Mm -hmm. uh, when the community is so resistant to affordable housing in general, uh, that's something we should um, further ask Glenn to research if that is an advisable concept for a community like Stratford. Mm -hmm. I know that Beth DePonte has comment, uh, commented on the chat screen. She says there was a TOD small project where the parking requirements were either waived or the landlords were allowed to be creative in the way it would be met. Okay. Thank you. Anybody here? May I just make one comment on number seven? One of the things that the whole committee really has spent a lot of time discussing, and it's still not resolved, it, but the very fact that so much of our housing is already affordable, but it does not exist on the government, on the Connecticut rolls as affordable housing. And the jobs, the projects that we do let go through, they quickly fall off those government role uh, the government list so that we don't ever get to keep them and build up our units are we're trying to hit 10,000 or whatever it is um, we don't ever get go in that direction 
So one of the things that this that this strategy has to accomplish is a way for us to create a more fulsome co collection of affordable properties. That we need to think about ways that don't necessarily cost us a lot of money, but actually would deed restrict properties or even portions of properties so that they could essentially go onto our affordable housing list. That would make a huge change for Stratford. Um, I'm going to pass this to Glenn. Um, thanks. Thank you, everybody. I think uh, the uh, final exercise really here, exercise number three, is just to open the floor up. If there's anything that we haven't talked about that you think would either be something that we should be considering as part of our work or uh, other things for us to think about or uh, other things that would be very important. Um, just as a quick heads up, I think what we've talked about in the committee is to begin to think about pulling a report together. Um, and we envision that we would be back to talk to the land use boards uh, as that process uh, moves ahead. So tonight isn't your only opportunity, but we are in the formative stages of our work. So this is an excellent opportunity for you to give us guidance and feedback. Is there anything else on your minds that you'd like to share with us or make sure that we're thinking about as, as we continue our work? I do have one comment. It's Dan Semp uh, planning. Okay. So I think everybody can agree we do a lot of thinking. Uh, we do a lot of talking. Um, I think what we need to really do is develop a timeline to get things accomplished. You know, I think when we uh, look at our different commissions, um, the amount of time that we spend going over and over different things. Some, some of these processes take years. And I think um, in order for us to move forward, we need to develop an action plan with a time frame to get these things accomplished, whether they be uh, short, concise uh, actions or not. But um, that's the frustrating part for me is the fact that, you know, we're trying to move ahead with different things. And we go back and forth with conversation. I think we really need to uh, set our, our sights on one or two particular goals and move ahead with those goals and get things accomplished instead of talking. my own personal feeling. Um, Harold, um, Mary Young wants to ask a question. Yes, Mary. Thank you. My question is for Glenn Chalder. Glenn, I should know the answer, but I don't, so I'm asking you. When the state of Connecticut uh, requires that each municipality adopt a housing plan, like the one you're trying to create, they said at that time, we will create a template so that you don't work in vain handing over a document that we deem unsatisfactory. They said they will create a template so that we're all following their model. So once these plans are drafted, they would be uh, successfully adopted and deemed satisfactory pursuant to A30G. Has that template been created? And if so, are you following it? Thank you. Thanks, Mary. Um, I've seen an email from the State Department of Housing. They are working on a guidance document. They're calling it a workbook or a toolbox. They expect that that report will be issued in the next two weeks. So we're close enough now. You wouldn't say two weeks if it was going to be significantly longer than that. It was supposed to have been out earlier this year, but because of COVID, some of the exercises and interactions that they wanted to do got, got held up. So I think uh, my current thought process is the timing of that report will come into this process at an opportune time. We can make sure that we're addressing or incorporating issues or concerns that the state has. So. Uh, uh, I don't know if it'll be before Thanksgiving, but it's not too far away. And and this is Jay Habansky, Mary, um, and Susmita might be able to speak, speak to this a little bit more, but early on in our development of our plan and, um, you know, as Susmita and I were setting goals internally prior to bringing Glenn on, uh, the state reached out to us based on, uh, because we were beginning a lot of our, the, our housing plan before the requirement was in place at least finalized and they were reaching out to us to get feedback on how we were structuring our plan um which i believe is somewhat encouraging 
Uh, and I would be, I would expect to see that a lot of what's required in the plan is, uh, are, are things that we have already outlined as priorities in, in, as part of our plan. So um, to add to what Jay said, yes, um, when we start, first embarked on this process, we reached out to State Department of Housing asking them for the requirements and we had a draft template in house on what we wanted to accomplish. So they asked us to share our model, which we did, and that seemed like a good path to go at that time uh, because they were like um, very um, happy to have gotten the template and they started working the model on that. I also think I, I read the last um, in our old files from, from my predecessor's town planning files, I saw an old requirement of housing plans and I know that will be the, if they are going to see anything that was done in the past, I'm sure they would want to keep that in uh, the new plans, which is to identify sites for affordable housing development and maybe incentivizing those developments moving forward to make the state more affordable in general. And I'm assuming that could be one of the requirements that would be asked off in the new plans. And who knows, let's see in the next two weeks what comes from that. Anybody? Harold, I'd just like the record to reflect that I apparently have, have gotten you uh, to the finish line 11 minutes early, so. Well, I hear it. I'm ready to <laughs> make another comment, but I don't dare. <laughs> well, I want to add something. Um, in the beginning, Mary Young has asked to, in general, share the timeline. So, Glenn, would you like to give a brief overview of the timeline and the next steps? So the group goes back knowing what to expect in the coming months. Yeah, so I think that the uh, housing partnership, we have a meeting scheduled for Thursday to talk about what we learned this evening um, and uh, put together a preliminary schedule for discussion um, to run by the members of the committee and see if they think that that schedule is realistic or aggressive or too slow. Um, I think uh, it shows us possibly having completion of a document or plan by March or April of 2021. And that would include coming back both to the uh, Planning Commission and the Zoning Commission for some additional input as we go. Um, but I think the housing partnership is going to decide what they think that schedule might look like. So uh, we're, we're trying to figure out um, how to uh, move things forward. And that schedule would be a key part of that. And just if I can add, this document eventually will become inserted into our POCD. So it will become a very, uh, a real operational document. This is not it's not like our complete streets <laughs> ordinance. It really should become a real document. Eventually, all of the commissions are going to have work to do in terms of uh, looking at zoning regulations and how do they fit. So part of the this committee's responsibility will be to ask the questions and to give the direction on what we need to do. Uh, there's all kinds of units of Stratford that have to put in there say and have to essentially sign on to what we're what we're asking about but i'll tell you i've never worked on a committee that has been so cooperative and worked so hard uh as this one so knock wood i hope we keep doing that um one last thing to add um in case you have any additional feedback that you haven't mentioned it tonight and you want to convey please feel free to send it by email to me and I will put um, everything together and transmit those to Glenn so he can review and work on those. Um, also, like, as you know, you are the people who implement, especially the Zoning Commission and um, Zoning Board of Appeals. Um, planning Commission too, in terms of uh, planning uh, related items. So if you think there's anything that you've seen, uh, like somebody, um, mentioned Cobb County, Georgia, as an example. Uh, it's worth bringing um, to our attention so we can all collaboratively look at those examples and understand um, you know, where this applies to our current process. Of course, we'll make sure that our research doesn't take too much of our time and we also you know, tug along in the next steps, but we'd also be uh, encouraging for any additional um, 
examples in nearby towns that you saw like as a good example for affordable housing that you think that the town could emulate? Chris, any yeah. comments? No, I think uh, I thank everybody for uh, for their participation. I thank uh, my colleague, Mr. Vigliotti from Zoning. I think uh, our Commissioner Lenwin was with us briefly, but he might have had to leave for something. But we will obviously be talking about this more within the first quarter of uh, 2021. Um, so um, maybe for the rest of the zoning members, I'll bring them up to speed at our, our next uh, meeting with some of the highlights and solicit their uh, written comments. So I think what we'll do right now, Harold, this is, uh, we appreciate the Planning Commission hosting us, so I will turn it back to you. Okay, I just wanna make one comment. Thank, thank everybody. And I think part of this would not have been so effective had we not under Chris Chris's direction, ended up getting money in the budget to fund our planners. So we are- Oh actually yeah, doing one time I forgot about that one, yeah. <laughs> For a long period of time, we just did not have the people to do. Uh, this is a result right. of having good planning in Stratford. So I appreciate that. Um, I'm going to actually now, I'm going to ask from my, one of my planning members, may I hear a move to close our meeting? Move to close, William. Okay, William closes. Any second? Second, second Christina. Christina seconds. All in favor? Aye. Aye. And there we go. We're closing. Thank you uh, very much, everybody. Thank you. Good night, everyone. Down to Stratford and everywhere. Good night. I declare this Good meeting closed. <laughs> Thank Happy you, Thanksgiving, everybody. Happy Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving. 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 Thanksgiving.